In the last episode of the show, you might remember that I used celery to make a crunching sound. Now that's something that Foley artists, the wizards behind movie sound effects, actually still do today. That is, they bang and smash vegetables to make sound effects. Celery makes an excellent breaking limb. But isn't that so fitting? Celery so often plays a crucial role in a dish, but you wouldn't necessarily know it's there. Well today, we're giving celery the spotlight. And if you think you know a thing or two about celery, stay tuned. You see, there was a time that I thought I knew a thing or two about celery too. And that was the day before I listened to a reporter, Maya Croft, tell the absolutely fascinating story of celery and its history here in America on our podcast, Proof. In that episode, I learned that celery was once the third most popular menu item on New York City restaurant menus in the 19th century. I learned that there were celery vases and dishes specifically designed for displaying celery at the table. Huh? And I learned that heirloom celery is a very real thing. If you haven't heard the episode yet, there's a link below this video. Check it out. Okay, now raise your hand if you've ever heard someone say that celery is a negative calorie food. So the explanation goes that because celery is so low in calories, you end up burning those calories off just in the process of digesting it. The energy used during digestion actually has a name, diet-induced thermogenesis, or DIT. So does the DIT from celery wipe out the calories you get from eating it? The science says no. Now there haven't been a ton of studies on this, but the few that do exist agree. One by Tabitha Watson at the University of Leicester concluded that a female adult could survive on celery alone if she ate 22 pounds a day. That's roughly 180 medium sized stocks. She would get sufficient protein and carbohydrates and also overdose on vitamin A among other unpleasant things. So where does this magical calorie positive food come from? Wild celery is native to the Mediterranean, but humans have been collecting seeds, transporting them all over the globe, and cultivating different types of celery for millennia. Chinese celery, also called leaf celery, is thought to be the oldest cultivated variety and is grown throughout East Asia. It is highly aromatic and flavorful. It is leafier than Western celery and features thinner, tougher stems. European growers selected for thicker, juicier stalks, eventually leading to the stuff that you find in most supermarkets here in the US. Nearly all the celery grown here in the US is of a single cultivar called Pascal. It features that familiar pale green color and juicy, thick stem stalks. But the flavor and appearance of celery owes just as much to how it is grown as to what type it is. And that's because celery growers use a technique called blanching. As they grow, celery bunches are buried in soil or wrapped in light-proof material to prevent sun from reaching the stalks and activating chlorophyll. This keeps the celery pale in color and suppresses the production of bitter compounds. That is also the reason that the inner stalks within a bunch of celery are paler in color and milder in flavor than those on the outside. They're protected entirely from the sun. But let's not forget that there is celery beyond the stalks. Celery leaves make up a substantial portion of Chinese celery and are often cooked right along with the stalks. In Western celery, the leaves are fewer and further between, but they make a really nice herb. We also have celery root and celery seed. Celery root comes from a variety that is grown specifically for its underground stem, which gets particularly large. That's right, it's not really the root. A celery root plant will have some thin stalks up top, but it's really much more of an either or situation. You can either have wonderful, tall, pale green stalks or a nice, big, round root. root. You can't have both. Celery root is wonderful roasted, pureed, souped, or remouladed. And celery seed is a unique and potent spice. For that, tiny brown seeds are harvested from a type of wild celery. It packs a strong punch of slightly bitter, really rich celery flavor. And here in the US, it's often used to season potato salads and pickled vegetables. A related seed with rich celery flavor called raduni is common in Bengali cooking in India's West Bengal state and across the border in Bangladesh. There, it can make up one of the spices in that region's classic spice blend, panch Phuong. It's a wide world of celery out there. Let's go to the kitchen. So many great meals start with a pan of hot fat and a mixture of chopped aromatic vegetables. And many of those mixtures, including French mirepoix, Italian battuto, and the Cajun trinity include celery in the mix. For any of these, if you don't need a particularly fine dice, you can save yourself some time by rinsing the entire top of the bunch of celery and going at it just like this. Just like with meat, celery has a natural grain to it. You can see it run up and down the stalk as fibrous strings. When you slice across the grain, as we do most of the times we're prepping celery, you cut those strings into nice small pieces that are really easy to chew. I hear people complain about celery stringiness, especially when they're trying to eat an entire stalk raw. Like I hear about it a lot. I get like a lot of emails. So if those strings are getting in the way of your eating pleasure, you can strip them out with a knife like this or take them off with a peeler like this. And that might be a good move if you're making one of the most iconic American celery dishes, 
ants on a log. That would be celery, peanut butter, and raisins. The practice of stuffing celery in this country is actually pretty old, but the term ants on a log doesn't really show up until the 1950s. I gotta say, I've never been a huge fan of ants on a log, but I recently went down a rabbit hole looking at variations on ants on a log. I'm kind of in love. There's gnats on a log, that's when you sub currants for raisins. There's ants on a slip and slide, that's when you add honey to the mix. Ants on vacation, that's a raisin free version. I might actually like that one. And then there are ones that go much further afield, sometimes even swapping out the celery. Bears in a honey bath, elephants on a snowy field, snakes in the grass, jewels in a mine, cows in a sandbox. Cows in a sandbox? They're just amazing. We have loads of amazing recipes featuring celery over on cooksillustrated.com, uh, and I put links to some of my favorites below the video, but it's about 100 degrees out right now, and all I really wanna do is eat a salad. So that's what we're gonna make. I'm gonna start with the vinaigrette. Now this one, a recipe by Don Yanagihara, actually contains a tiny bit of mayonnaise to help form a super stable emulsion. The base is vinegar, shallot, mayonnaise, mustard, and a little bit of salt. Then I just streamed an extra virgin olive oil until emulsified and creamy. Nice. Now for the salad portion. Now this is a recipe by Cook's Illustrated's very own executive food editor, Keith Dresser, and it's a classic. We've got tender bib lettuce, crunchy, slightly bitter frisee, thinly sliced apple, and walnuts. Oh, and of course, celery. Now we'll just get everything into a nice big bowl. I like to use a really big bowl for salad. Get a little bit of vinaigrette in there. Toss, combine, toss, combine. Plate it up. And this is how to eat. Wait, 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 wait. This salad looks awesome. It's gonna be delicious. But I need way more celery than this. Quite frankly, I need more booze too. I need Sasha Marks's Fresh Horseradish Bloody Mary. So we've got tomato juice, lemon juice, fresh horseradish, Worcestershire sauce, fish sauce, Old Bay seasoning, and vodka. Actually, I'm gonna use gin, because that's why I keep around. Then we just shake it up, strain or not strain, onto some nice fresh ice, add our beautiful, gorgeous, pale green, calorie positive stock of celery, and yeah, salad and a Bloody Mary, this is definitely how to eat celery.